So moving on. So after the Bloody Mary, the, the next one you had was a mojito. That's well, something we've started working on this summer since I had mint. I, lo- I love mojitos. They're, they're my favorite. summertime. Uh, they have been the official 2020 quarantine drink of summer. Because <laughs> yeah. we did that big herb garden and mint was a big part of it. Well, mint was about <clears> the only thing so that would good. grow. And so fresh. I mean, I even ordered the sugar cubes for yeah. it. I got like a quart jar of sugar cubes that I got on Amazon because, you know, I didn't want to just use simple syrup. We wanted to make authentic mojitos. Yep. Well, I think the where sugar. Do they come from Cuba, right? Is I that where so. it's a Cuban drink? Yeah, it's a Cuban drink. Um, yeah, awesome. I think. I They're a bit of Cuba, but I love the cocktail. <laughs> um, the thing with the using the real sugar cubes in a mojito is you muddle it with your lime and your, and um, your mint. mint. Yeah. So I think the coarseness of the sugar. Helps break it up yeah, a little. By the time yeah. you break the sugar cubes up, the mint's bruised <laughs> properly without getting just torn into pieces. Because yeah. there's nothing worse than trying to use it. Like you don't want to muddle it too much because you don't want all the mint leaves broke up into little pieces where you're sucking them up the straw or yeah, whatever. You want it. You want it to get the essence of the mint without getting all the mint pieces in your mouth. Yeah. They are kind of bitter. So how do you make a mojito? First off, you get about I don't know eight to ten mint leaves. I guess is what I would say. Yep, it's six. It's, yeah, it's six, six to, to eight, eight mint yeah. leaves. Fresh mint leaves. You put them in a cocktail mixture. Like a metal cocktail mixture. Mm-hmm. And then you put in some sugar cubes. I probably got four cubes. What yep. I got on there? Four, four cubes, cubes of sugar. One li- uh, um, quarter Half a lime, lime, but I quarter it so you can break it up easier. All that goes in there, and you take the back of your bartender spoon. It's got the little muddler on it, or if you got a wooden muddler, whatever. And you just, muddler is just kind of whooping it's and a, mashing it around. <laughs> it's a masher. Yeah, it's a masher. <laughs> just think of it as mashing all that stuff around together until it kind of makes its own little syrupy concoction yeah. in there. Then you pour in your light rum. Uh, I'm usually got Bacardi, light rum, and uh, some more lime some more juice. Lime juice. Uh, squeeze the rest of that lime in there. Uh, give that a good little shake. Pour it, uh, put it, fill it full of ice, and then pour it in the cup. And then top the cup off with some club soda and garnish it with some lime and maybe more another mint leaf or two. And it's like I've, and it's summertime in a glass. And I don't know if I've never had a mojito. I just assumed I wouldn't like a mojito. Yeah. But when we started making them this summer, I was like, why haven't we been doing this sooner? If you made it with vodka, would it be a, a mosquito? <laughs> mosquito. <laughs> That's a good. Uh, I need to add that to it. It's a mosquito version. It's just vodka. It's not Stoliana. I did it's make Stoli's it. vodka. You could use uh, orange make- Stolies and and a, and a piece of orange in there too, and make a mosquito, mosquito. I did make it with um, vodka one time this summer. It's all right. It's not it as good as with good. the rum. Mm-mm. I'm a rum man. I love rum. I usually like darker rum, like darker the darker the berry sweeter juice. You said. I don't like rum. Rum likes me. Yeah, I don't like the rum. The rum likes me. That's right. That's what I tell the ladies on the island. So, um, they believe it too. Mississippi Mule. What is a Mississippi Mule? So, a Mississippi Mule is basically a Moscow Mule, but it's made with cat head vodka, hence the Mississippi part. That's all it is. So, a Mule is a vodka drink mixed with ginger beer. And usually, you know, lime. That's about it. Yep. Ice in a copper mug. I don't know where that part comes from. Yeah. Uh, but it's good. It I, I really, really like, I like ginger. Ginger is one of those, some people don't like it. I love but it. But ginger beer, I don't know if it's alcoholic. It's more like just. They sell it in the cocktail section. Yeah, it's like section. kicked up ginger ale. It's like if you've had, if you've had like, what's the brand of uh, ginger ale out there? There's all kinds of different. Oh, um, Schweppes. Yeah, Schweppes ginger ale, or what do you think of the canned ginger ale or whatever? Uh, they they take it and it's usually in a little bottle, but it's more intense ginger flavor. It's a sweetened, it's carbonated, carbonated, ginger carbonated beverage. non-alcoholic beverage. Yeah, so that's what it is, and you just mix it, use it as a mixture, like you would Sprite or anything else. Ginger beer is produced by the natural fermentation of prepared ginger spice, yeast, and sugar. It is a little spicy. Yeah. I like, that's what I like about ginger. You know, and it's good for your, Digestive. if you've got, yeah, if you've got like stomach issues or it a little nausea, nausea or anything, it's good. It's great for it. <laughs> if you're out on a boat. I learned, yeah, I learned that on the, <laughs> on the damn wide open ocean. <laughs> ginger will save you. <laughs> Nothing was saving you. Uh-uh. 
It's also a good palate cleanser. That's why they serve it uh, with sushi. I love it with sushi, but that's pickled. Is it pickled? or? Yeah, no, that's pickled yeah. ginger at that point. Um, I love pickles. The next one on the list is Cousin Eddie Reed's Famous Bullfrog. Now, this one takes me back. The Bullfrog. This one is guaranteed to make you hot. It's more of a party punch. Yes. And we always serve it at our bar. It goes, it's another one of those summertime classics. If you think of a kicked up, oh, it is a kicked up lemonade. It's a vodka lemonade or lemon limeade, right? Yeah. So you take, the way I've always done it is you get like two liters of Sprite and or seven fifths or half gallons of vodka, whatever you want. You can make a bigger batch or small batch as you want. Usually we make like two liters of Sprite, a fifth of vodka. This is just a baby batch. Uh, one can of frozen limeade concentrate. It's over in the frozen section grocery store with the juices and stuff. And then one can of frozen lemonade concentrate. And uh, then you float fresh. some slices. And you float some lemon float lime slices. And oranges. Yep. Yeah, just Whatever for you looks. Want. You float those in there. So you get you a big punch bucket and you put your vodka in there and you put your concentrates in there and you stir it up and you pour in your Sprite and float your fruit. And is, we people, always have and it. You better warn people to watch it because. It, you don't know that it's got alcohol in it. You don't taste that vodka. All you get is this refreshing lemon lime beverage that you think's lemonade, and it's, it'll get you in trouble. Um, we serve it at Memphis Mate every single year, and it's so good because you're out there, you're hot, you're sweating, you know, you're always drinking water, or drinking a beer, or whatever, yeah. and you just get like, ugh, nothing sounds good to you. And somebody says, so you, you want a bullfrog? Re- refreshing bullfrog. Like, yeah. You need some hop, don't you? Yeah, you need a little hop. You need a little hop. So we had it in our booth at Memphis in May. In a big container. Like yeah. you're just sitting up there looking all good and refreshing. Like it's a lemonade stand. Yeah. And we had a sign on that says Eddie's Bullfrog. Eddie Reed. Eddie, Eddie Reed. Eddie MFNR Reed's Bullfrog. Yeah. <laughs> and, That's uh, what it's called. The guys from Thermoworks, they're all Mormons. From, they, from Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. They came in and were hanging out and helping themselves to the lemonade. I don't think they were. They had no idea. They didn't know how to I felt bad about that. <laughs> yeah. He came back the next day and was like, uh, you know, I left your tent and I was feeling a little loopy and feeling a little funny. Was there alcohol in that lemonade? Like, <laughs> There's alcohol in every lemonade. Yeah, it's Memphis and May. Yeah, I don't know if you can find some without <laughs> it. Unless you would ever, well, yeah. I don't know. I, I felt mean, bad about that. I did. I felt, I felt bad. bad about that. Like, felt really well, bad, but at the same time, I'm like, at Memphis and my every- You should have known. <laughs> we weren't selling this to the public. This is where. <laughs> this is. <laughs> There's no kids running around here. <laughs> I did feel bad. Oh, man. But that is one of those things when it's hot and it's your outside work, and it's kind of like the haymaker you make. Yes. A little. Those are real you know, summertime, summertime drinks. The haymaker's got ginger in it. And it has apple cider vinegar, which is unique, but it's it puts electrolytes back in you. If you yeah. are having a little summer party and want to get everybody wooing. Get you some bullfrog. Get you some bullfrog. Bullfrog is guaranteed to get them to wooing. The woo girls will come out. <laughs> woo. <laughs> um, now, the next one you have on the list is my one of my favorite drinks. What is it? The Jack and Ginger? The Jack and Ginger. That's the... That's that's another one of those. You got to have that ginger ginger ale, or you yeah. could use ginger beer too. So I mean, Jack and Sprite is okay. You Jack like it, ginger? Yeah, I think you just like saying, "Give me the Jack and Ginger." I like the Jack and Ginger. It sounds like it's fancy. Uh, yeah, fancy. What is it? Uh, it's a it's double Jack shot, Daniels. double shot of Jack Daniels in a rocks glass, and just enough ginger ale to get it to the top. <laughs> you don't have to garnish it or anything. <laughs> Maybe stir it. You just not definitely not shaking. Just start knocking them back. Huh. Yep. And they go down. You can't beat Jack Daniels whiskey, man. If I'm drinking whiskey straight, I want Woodford. Yeah. But I don't like to drink whiskey straight when I'm out and about and you know. Well, that's bourbon. You like your bourbon straight, right? Yeah. You like it on the rocks or neat? Just Oh no, I, don't, I like it on the no, rocks. Right. I want it a little cold. Gotcha. Um, but if I'm out and about doing stuff, you know Jack and Ginger. Jack and Ginger. Jack yeah. Daniels is a really good whiskey. It is. It's a gentleman's whiskey. I like the gentleman Jack too. It is good. <laughs> the next one on the list is a flaming Dr. Pepper. Woo. <laughs> That's one I wrote. Yeah, not many people probably know what this is. But we used to play this game. This this is my flaming Dr. Pepper story. 
We played this game called In Between, and it's like this dollar game that you play and you pull cards and oh, try yeah, to guess yeah, if yeah. the next one's going to be in between or whatever, and you got to match the pot if you hit on the card or what. It was a it's game. It's one of those quick moving. Yeah, it's fun. quick moving party game. Yeah. And so we got the. It was at my buddy's house. This was back during college, and we got to drinking flaming Dr. Peppers. And a flaming Dr. Pepper is you, you get a beer, you get a beer mug, and you pour a twelve ounce beer in it, can beer, and then. You get a shot glass and you fill it up with amaretto, but you leave a little bit of room on top and you float 151 on top and you light it on fire. You drop it down in the beer glass on the edge or don't splash. And, you know, you got to watch it because it'll get fire all over you. I mean, it's, it's, it can get really bad as the night goes on. But you drop it down in there and you chug it real fast and it tastes just like you're drinking Dr. Pepper. The amaretto, the flame, the 151 and mixed with the beer. It just, it tastes like Dr. Pepper. Who do you think was the first one came up with that? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I imagine. Hey, man. I don't even know how they come up with the idea to set it on fire. <laughs> yeah. You know, why would you set that shot on fire? But it it tastes like flaming Dr. Pepper. So we were playing in between, and I next thing you know, I was 13 deep. Like When it got up to over six, we started counting, you know, and I was 13 in, and after that, it just went black. And I remember, I remember at one point I was outside the house and they had a hill out there and I was just laid out and people would come out there and talk to me. And then the next morning I've got to go to work at like 8 a.m. I was working at casinos. This was like a Friday night. And I had to be at work at How old were you? 42, oh, 43? <laughs> yeah, 42. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, I don't know. 18, 19. I wasn't even, I wasn't even drinking age, I don't think. This was young. Yeah. I wasn't even 21 yet. <laughs> and, and I woke up. With my head like in somebody's spaghetti pot, <laughs> nothing was in the pot. My like, my feet was up on the couch. <laughs> I was still I, I still had clothes on, but my head was like in the spaghetti pot. The pot was kind of turned sideways, and there was just puke everywhere. I felt so bad, but I had to go to work. I was like, oh, I didn't know where I was, how I got there. I remember going uh, going home. I don't know how I made it home. Oh my god, I would hate. I jumped that. in the shower, and I, this was. Very embarrassing, but I had to ask my mom to drive me to work because I could not drive. <laughs> so she took me to work, and I was working as a bellman down at uh, Horseshoe Casino, I think, at the time. And we had this closet that we kept, you know, luggage and rolling carts for luggage and all this stuff in there. And I just sat in there on one of those carts for about four hours in the dark. And then I remember saying, I got to go. And I, so I called my mom to come back and get me. I said, you got to come back and get me. But she came back, and she was like, well, do you just mind if – me and your dad go over to the casino with Sheraton next door or whatever. We're going to go in there and just play some slot machines. And I was just, really? just want to get in the car. So I sat in the car and I said, like, screw it. I'm going to the casino. So I still had my work clothes on, but I took my badge and stuff off and they didn't ID me. So I went to the Sheraton casino and then they started serving me drinks in there. And that's all we You just kept going. <laughs> I kept going. But that was a rough one. That was a rough one. I probably shouldn't have told that story. <laughs> Makes me look bad. It was a party, man. <laughs> we didn't stay all night or nothing. <laughs>